What's up guys? In this video we're going to be taking a look at every time a map has been reused across two different Fire Emblem games or more. So this is going to be looking at like if a map is reused in the same game or in a, like a remake. Uh, this is going to be like if they reuse a map across two different games. So the first map is the first map of FE1, Marth and Barks, FE1 and FE11. This map was reused for Xenologs 1, 2, and 3, the Champions of Yore DLC pack in FE13 in Awakening. Um, this time, I, they just reused the map, I think, just as like a callback to, you know, Fire Emblem's roots. So not, it's not a, like, a, it's just DLC, it's not a, like a part of the story or the main game, so not really a big deal but it does look pretty nice in awakenings graphics and they kind of copied it pretty much one to one the next map that was reused is the norda market map from fe1 fe11 uh chapter 11. uh they reused it in fe3 book 2 and fe12 um as chapter 19 the final battle and this is basically the same same map uh pretty much one to one um the enemies are of course, placement's different. That's always going to be different, really, though. Uh, but I think more importantly is like the story difference here. Um, in both circumstances, Marth is going to is like trying to uh, reclaim the capital, Arcanea. Only this time, only in FE1, he's reclaiming it from um, Grust, Macedonia, uh, Dollar, one of them, one of them three. Um, in FE3, he is reclaiming it from Harden, who was under the control of the Dark Sphere. Next is the Ageless Palace map from Chapter 12 of FE1, FE11. Uh, this was reused again at FE3, Book 2, and FE12 for Chapter 20, The Dark Emperor. Um, pretty much the same story uh, circumstances as the previous map. And again, it's just a one-to-one -one copy, really, of the map. Next, we have the Wooden Cavalry map from FE1, FE11, Chapter 13. Um, this one they reused for Ballistician Blitz in Xenolog 11 of Fates DLC. This is another just like kind of callback to bring in the like Ballistician uh, promotion item for the DLC. Next, we have Land of Sorrow from Chapter 14 of FE1, FE11. Uh, this was reused in Graw Setting Sun for FE3 and FE12, Chapter 17. So in this map's just kind of a one-to-one, -one, pretty much. The story circumstance is a little different. Uh, this time in FE1, um, they go to Graw to uh, find Falchion, and they learn Falchion's not even there in Graw. Um, and in FE3, they have to go to Graw to kind of quell the rebellion, I guess. Um, Graw is kind of supporting Hardin and Arcanea. And Mark just basically wants to go to Graw to kind of, you know, tell them, you know, he's not looking for a fight. He wants to actually kind of join up and be friends again, like before uh, everything all even happened back in, like before the War of Shadows. I think that's what it's called. Next, we have an Oasis of Magic, uh, chapter 15 from FE1 and FE11. This was reused for Sanctuary of Sorcery in FE3 and FE12, chapter 9. This is another just pretty much one to one map. They did add a village in FE3 and FE12. Uh, that's where for where you get Minerva. And but the story circumstances are in FE1. They are tracking down Garnif to get the Falchion back, but Garnif is too powerful, so they kind of have to retreat. In FE3, they are on the run from Harden and they come to uh, Kadeen to um, try, to try to join up with Merrick, but they find out that Elrian has already sided with Hardin, so they have a situation to handle there. Next is the Battle for Altea, chapter 16 of FE1 and FE11, uh, once again reused in FE3 and FE12 for Return of the Prince, chapter 15. Um, the story is basically the same though for both of these marth is just heading to reclaim his kingdom so this is just kind of like sweeping up the uh forces that are like outside of the capital and then the next chapter is star and savior 
chapter 17 of FE1 and FE11, reused in FE3, FE12 for Reclaim the Capital in chapter 16. Um, pretty much the same as the last map, Marth is in both circumstances reclaiming his kingdom from the enemy. You kind of feel bad for Marth having to having his kingdom getting taken over while he's gone in both games. But these maps are pretty much just one to one. They didn't really change anything. Next we have the Sable Order from chapter 18 of FE1 and FE11. This was reused for Soulful Bridge in chapter 8 of FE3 and FE12. Um, this is basically the same map except for that one. They kind of switched where the like castle is because of how in FE1 you're going, you're starting in the north and working your way down south and you're doing the opposite in FE3, you're at the south and then you're going north. Um, in FE1 we are starting to invade Grust and we're going to find like Tiki in the Fane of Ramen and in FE3 uh, Marth is basically return, trying to return home after they've liberated Grust, uh, but then Hardin shows up and then they're forced to flee to uh, Kadeen. Kadine. And that's it for like every map in FE1 that's reused. Next we have Duma's Gate from Gaiden, FE2, and FE15 Echoes, which was remade or reused for A Man for Flowers Paralog 6 in Awakening. So I don't really know what they were thinking here for reusing this map. Um, it's a good map actually though, so I don't really have a problem with it. Um, and if you like line up where the paralog in it on Awakening, this paralog takes place on the world map, it actually lines up with where Duma's Gate would be in like Echoes and Gaiden. So I think it's pretty cool how they like kept that true to like the, the world map there. Then uh, another map from Gaiden and Echoes is the Fear Mountain map. Uh, this was reused for the Witch's Trial Xenolog 13 in the Fates DLC. Uh, this is where you get that the Witch's promotion item. So again, this is probably just like a, a callback, you know, cool callback for like just DLC. Uh, next is the Grustian Expedition map from chapter one of FE3 and FE12. Um, this one actually took me a couple playthroughs until I like realized it, that they reused this map in the Dead King's Lament, Paralog 18 of FE13, where you can recruit Gangrel if you want to. And another, th and this is again, like it, they line up on the world map, like in Awakening, you can tell that this Paralog kind of takes place where the former like Grust would have been basically. So I think that's pretty cool there. Next, uh, they reused a map from FE4, the prologue, Birth of the Holy Knight, uh, specifically the second half of this map. Uh, they reused for Xenologues 4, 5, and 6, Lost Bloodlines in Awakening, uh, the DLC. So again, just a pretty cool callback to uh, an old Fire Emblem game. Next in FE6 and FE7, they reuse the same map for Collapse of the Alliance Chapter 4 and False Friends Chapter 14. And this is really the same like story um, circumstance as well. You fight Eric both times. Um, Eric's trying to pretty much ally with, you know, the enemy, Burn and like the Black Fang respectively. Next is a map that I'm kind of like uh, not sure about, but it looks the same. Uh, it has the same design, I guess. It is the Genesis from FE7 Chapter 23X and Infinite Regalia, Xenolog 15 from Awakening. Um, it's not, I don't think this is intentional that it's the same map, but it, it basically is. We have 25 rooms in both of these maps, just a five by five square. Um, there are more like spaces in the rooms in the Awakening map than in FE7. So technically, I guess not the same map. And also like the interior, like kind of design is different. The aesthetics are different. There's also some pillars in the Awakening map that aren't there in the FE7 one. But I thought just to throw this in there, it looks very similar. 
Then we have the final chapter uh, called Light from FE7 was reused for the Xenologues 7, 8, and 9, Smash Brethren and Awakening DLC. Just another callback is pretty cool. This is a it's pretty nice looking map, I just think. Then a, another map, this one's from FE9, Chapter 8, Despair and Hope. This was reused for more Fates, or Awakening DLC, uh, Xenologues 10, 11, and 12, Rogues and Redeemers. Then we have uh, the Great Bridge Chapter uh, from FE9, Chapter 23. They reused for uh, Just Cause, Chapter 311 and FE10. This is probably the only one of these reused maps that I would have a problem with because this map, like of all the maps to like reuse from FE9 for like FE10, they choose this one. Uh, this map is just a pain in the ass to play through and even made it worse in FE10. I don't think FE9 has the like pitfalls and like there's like enemies that'll drop light runes to make you like have to go through the the paths with that have the pitfalls. So unless you just use R to like fly over this entire map, like this is just a pain in the ass to play. Next, um, in FE10, they took Alintia's Gambit from 2 Endgame and reused it for Vanguard Dawn, Xenolog 9 in the Fates DLC to get uh, the Vanguard promotion item. And I just think this is a pretty cool callback to a pretty good, a really good map from uh, Radiant Dawn. Next we have uh, Chapter 2, Shepherds from Awakening. They reused this map for the Xenolog 1 before Awakening of Fates DLC. Um, I don't know, I guess they just wanted to, when they were thinking of this DLC, they just wanted to use a, an Awakening map for this, I guess. I mean, I don't really even understand what's going on in this DLC sometimes. Uh, this is just when like Corrin meets Krom. I don't know why. And the final map is the military uh, uh, from Naga's Voice, chapter 16 of Awakening. They went ahead and reused this map for the Hidden Truth 1 DLC in Fates. So I guess there's like story significance for why they reused this map for the Hidden Truths DLC. Um, this map's not really all that bad. Um, it's just kind of like weird looking. I guess it's just a different aesthetic compared to pretty much any other Fire Emblem map, I guess. Now we're fighting on Giant Tree. And that is every map that has ever been reused in Fire Emblem so far. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.